Beautiful strip. And he's done it. Good evening to the highlights of a day's play to which um, I was very much looking forward before a ball was bowled. 251 for four Australia and a real chance for them to back up uh, their fine batting at the tail end of that Old Trafford Test match. Are they on the way back? Well, we were going to find out this morning. 251 for four with border 51 and conditions just as they were yesterday. Not a cloud in the sky. The temperature promised of around about uh, 29 degrees. And uh, the England bowlers, well, perhaps just a little bit weary from their exertions yesterday. We pick up Willis now as he's being roared in by the crowd. Young Dirk Wallam is taking strike against him. No runs have been added. And in the commentary box, Tom Graveney and Jim Laker. So, fair share of short deliveries come in here from uh, Bob Willis. Yes, uh, Bob Willis giving Dirk Wellham everything he's got. And it's very close. Two or three short ones, picks one up, took Wellham by surprise, beat him there for pace, and Wellham goes for 24, leaving Australia 260 for five. Very intelligent piece of bowling there from Bob Willis. Softened him up with a number of short ones, got him worried and rocking on the back foot, and then the well pitched up one. So Rod Marsh to face. Oh, it's amazing the number of Australians it's an into got away with its confident shots. Won't reach the fence, but Marsh off for three with a very pleasant off drive. Good shot by Rod Marsh. Front foot right down the wicket. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Great straight drive. Took into account a little bit of swing. It's racing down the pavilion. Boy got given chase. So a beautiful straight drive there from Border. Takes him on to 59. Short again. He's middled it beautifully. And it's four more to Rod Marsh. Well, to date, he's uh, really sorted out the ones to hook and the ones to leave alone. So Willis again to Marsh to complete his over. And he's edged it and he's caught it the second attempt. Now he's both and once more, would you believe? And here we can see, watch Rod Marsh's feet. They don't really move at all and he's just played across at a fraction goes to Chris Tavare and Ian Botham catches the rebound <laughs> oh great shot cracking shot Paul Parker can do nothing but run and retrieve it Four runs to border. Good stop. And uh, this first delivery from Mike Hendrick not bouncing as high as Alan Border thought, and a magnificent stop there by Alan Knott. And he very nearly tipped that onto the helmet lying behind, which would have been five runs. This time the gap and Parker has to chase. And he's got a good arm, they know that. A wonderful throw. First bounce, top of the stumps. So Australia approaching the 300 mark. A 
Burnish point. Right, just waited there. It uh, was a ball of very, very full length, almost to Yorker. And Brady took uh, a sharp catch, was moving very quickly. And Botham has taken another wicket. And perhaps not such a good throw from Bob Willis without the extra single. That's very good cricket from young Alan Border. Splendid cricket. Shot. <laughs> a trifle rustic, but uh, a real good old fashioned belt. Willis is fourth wicket of the innings and he really has responded to the uh, roars of the crowd and the instructions of his captain and away goes Dennis Liddy. He hikes it over that close field, and it's uh, the exact approach which uh, Tom Green really recommended. Four runs to border. Australian dressing room, the balcony outside, and they've uh, spent some time watching water lately. <laughs> oh, what a magnificent effort, what a splendidly calculated chance taken by Border to drive both them over the top, but uh, you must expect miracles, and both have almost pulled off yet another one. And this really is terrific stuff. Alan Border making his mind up to go for the big one, over the top, getting a little bit close to it, and it goes high and left to Ian Botham, and he just knocks it down. Marvellous effort. This time, the middle of the bat, and the ball flashes away. Four runs border, Alan Border goes up to 90, Australia 331 for nine. So far, they appear to be fairly tolerant and understanding these uh, tactics. Oh, good shot. Perfectly good shot. Found the gap between uh, mid-on and the stumps. And he's going to run the three, and he's taking the bowling. Well, that's fine play by Alan Border. And that really makes a nonsense of the... England strategy for a moment because there's nothing that they can do to stop this man from taking most of the strike and playing most of the shots. So Australia now 333. Still 
managed to bowl the late in swinger to border. Oh, lovely shot. In come the England fielders, and crack goes Borders back once again. Four runs to Border. That takes him to 99. The perfect off drive. Foot to the pitch of the ball. And that bat swinging right through the line there. Well, just think, Alan Border was only on 80 when Whitney came to the crease. So it's tremendous performance by Border to take the lion's share of the bowling and also to Mike Whitney for propping up at the other end. Last ball of both ends over. Border on 99. And there it is. Beautifully placed. A wonderful century. The second in successive test matches by Alan Border. And he's achieved this despite all the plans and strategies of the England fielders. A marvellous hundred by Alan Border. And he'll pick up four for that. Loose one from Embry, full toss on leg stump, you can't ask, ask for much more than that if you're a left-hander on uh, 102. Close to 106 now out of order, 348 for nine. <laughs> All right, he's off the mark, Michael Whitney. Off the mark in Test Cricket. A handshake there from Alan Border, because not only is it uh, Whitney's first run in two Test matches, but it's his highest score in first-class cricket. <laughs> and he's no great believer in having the shirt tucked into uh, the top of the strides. Go on, they can run for that if they want. It's all going on again. Ian Botham trying to dig that one in. It really didn't get terribly high at all. Went off the shoulder. There's Mike Whitney. delivery and uh, might even have troubled a number seven or eight Ian Botham 47 overs 13 maidens six for 125 that's a good bowling performance on this track there's a bit of bounce there but it hasn't given the bowlers very much assistance at all 106 to Alan Border. He leaves now to a standing ovation, and so he should. Well, I don't know how the Australians uh, will view that in uh, the dressing room, but the one sitting up here in front of the camera doesn't think much of it. 352 after what promised at the start to be something around about uh, 400, perhaps even up towards the 500 mark. That uh, tail again just slipped away there. Marsh 12, Bright 3, Lily Alderman and Whitney, and full marks to young Whitney for staying there with Alan Border for so long and enabling him to reach his century. That was a splendid innings from Alan Border, and uh, he deserves full credit for that and the one he played at Old Trafford. Two really top-class efforts from one of the best players Australia has produced in 20 years. He defied those bowlers. Willis, 4 for 91, bowled really well today, and so too did both of them. He swung the ball a lot and uh, that was significant 
as uh, the game went on later in the afternoon. Six for 125, both of them in 47 overs, 198 test wickets now. And although Dennis Lilly's approaching uh, Lance Gibbs' record, Ian Botham's not all that far away either. So now to what the Australian bowlers might do on the same pitch where the batsmen had been bowled out for 352. Would there be a great deal of life in it, a lot of bounce, as we saw from Willis? Well, here's the first over, and Geoffrey Boycott's taking strike to that great fast bowler, Dennis Lilly, and with me in the commentary box is Ted Dexter. Three to boycott, and Larkins now to take strike to Lily. Not quite time that, but Larkins is off the mark. Field there by Willem. And that's nudged away, exactly where the gully was moved from. Nicely controlled shot, kept it down, run it down to third man. There is no third man. So Boycott will pick up three runs there. Beautiful shot. Quick nicely down the square leg. Four runs. Type of uh, stroke there that people at Northampton have been used to seeing coming from the bat of Wayne Larkins. Doesn't he look splendid in the umpire's hat? Bit of a Groucho Marx there. Well, it needed the umpire's hat for some action to come, even if it was worn by uh, D. Lilly. Just shows you what authority that hat yields. Yeah. Seen from these two, from the length to a nice off the legs. Porter Larkins. Beautiful time stroke from Wayne Larkins. He picks that ball off his legs very, very well indeed. And that went really quickly to the boundary. Good shot again. Nice timing off the back foot to bring up the 50 for England. And they've done it rather comfortably Larkins has gone to 28 17 to boycott and he's gone a little bit quicker that one and fraction more bounce and Larkins having just Past his previous best in Test cricket, 33, falls to Dennis Lilly, caught by Terry Alderman at slip for 34. So Dennis Lilly goes to 280 Test match wickets. Larkins goes back to the pavilion.
brings Chris Tavare to take strike last ball of Bright's over. And he's off the mark too. Not a, in spectacular fashion, but uh, it's always a relief to get the first runs in the test match innings. Great attempt that at a slip catch. Outside edge from Jeff Boycott. And uh, mid the diving bodies. Terry Alderman was the second slip fielder. And this delivery slanted across Jeff Boycott. And in the end, a little bit wide to play at, and that definitely carried to Terry Alderman. A great effort, low down to his left. Pitch the rare one. It's not hit with any power, but it's pushed very easily through mid off. To bring Boy got two more runs. Boy got 39 and Tavry still six. A chance to add to it now as he faces a fresh over from Ray Bright. means that in the last half hour only eight runs have accrued since these two came together and this packed overall crowd have really had enough now they're demonstrating one or two looking a bit hostile around the edges well, I think uh, if the ball was turning and lifting, there would be something to say for it. But this is a beautiful wicket. And uh, positively no reason why more strokes can't be played. Is this going to be the first four for Boycott? No, it's not. But it will certainly be three. Oh, Bob Willis is pretty sure he's not going to be required again today. He's captain alongside him. Paul Parker is due to come in next, but I would doubt very much if a wicket fell, whether Brearley would send him in under these circumstances in his first test match. as to whether to take two but he's done it and that brings the hundred up finally for England takes Tavery on to eight and three figures on the ball for England well that was slow going and uh, the crowd voiced a little bit of displeasure towards the end they might have voiced a bit more if it had been Australia taking 43 overs for 100 for one but uh, just the one success there for the Australian bowlers Lily getting Larkins for 34 I thought Larkins played well he struck the ball very, very nicely, timed it well and placed it well. Boycott, well, it took him uh, 43 overs for 47, and Tabaret was very slow towards the end. I'm hoping that the third day of this Cornhill Test match uh, will be an absolute beauty. Sometimes we don't have Saturdays that uh, provide a lot of uh, marvellous cricket. I'm hoping that uh, tomorrow will uh, just be a nice finale to the season, the best Saturday we've had for the whole summer. But uh, certainly England have done very, very well. And the bright spot for Australia was that performance of Alan Borders. Every time I see him play, I enjoy his batting more. He doesn't look great, but he is a very good player. Beautiful.